Hi everyone, been a little while between videos and one of the reasons for that is that I've been working on these, the Drop Bear V2. So about four years ago, I released the Drop Bear, original Drop Bear ECU, uh, which was a, an eight fuel and eight ignition uh, board based on the Teensy 3.5 microcontroller. Um, really popular, really well uh, received ECU. Um, unfortunately, not long after just the first batch of those came out, um, I started to run into some issues with uh, supply constraints. We were seeing the chip shortage starting to hit. Uh, those were the early days of it. Um, and unfortunately, it continued to get worse and worse uh, over the, the 12 months or so following that initial batch of ECUs. It really culminated with the discontinuation of the Teensy 3.5 when those microcontrollers stopped getting made, um, which meant that unfortunately, I couldn't manufacture any more dropper ECUs. I get asked a lot, what's going on with it? Are they gonna be more available? Um, you know, I, I couldn't make any more of the V1 units, uh, but I have been working on these V2 units for a little while now, uh, and I'm pleased to say that they're just about ready for release. Um, so what's changed with them? Well, the, probably the biggest thing is that they've moved to the TNC 4.1 unit rather than the, uh, the 3.5. Um, these are, are much more readily available now. Um, they're, they're still a current active product. Um, and an absolutely amazing uh, microcontroller to use. I did a little video a little while back um, just for a little bit of fun using one of these microcontrollers in a Drop Bear V1 ECU, and I did that because it was um, one of uh, the fastest microcontrollers that you can get for this kind of work. Um, and I joked at the time that it was probably the fastest aftermarket ECU ever made. Uh, here we are a few years later and I'm releasing a full uh, fully fledged ECU product um, based around one of these chips and I think it is probably the fastest microprocessor ever used in an aftermarket ECU. Doesn't actually mean very much in terms of um, what that's useful for, um, but it is nice to have all that processing power as overhead. Um, if you want to see some more details of that, I made a video a few years ago, um, check that out and just see what, just how much faster this, this microprocessor is than some of the ones that have been used on other products and, and even other Speedwino ECUs. Uh, so the TNC 4.1 is there. There's a few other component changes just to, um, to make things a little bit easier for manufacturer and to, to help keep the price down. There were a few chips on board that had gone up dramatically in price, so um, I've moved to, to different versions of, of those chips. Um, it has a slightly larger real-time clock battery. Um, the initial boards had a very small battery and quite a difficult to get one. It wasn't a particularly common battery size. Um, this is a, a larger battery, a little bit easier to get. Um, and it, like, just like the first one, it is rechargeable. So if you're using the system fairly frequently, um, it will be recharging and you should get good life out of that, that real-time clock battery. Uh, probably the most requested feature from the, um, the Drop Air V1, the V2 now has USB-C rather than the uh, micro USB connector that the first one had. Um, the cables to allow this um, will be made available separately as well. So for Drop Air V1 owners, if you want to swap over to USB-C, I will be making those available on the speedreno.com store um, and you can swap those ones over in your existing units fairly easily. Probably the other big change that people are excited about with these ECUs is that they have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE built in. Um, the Drop Bear V2 comes with uh, a module inbuilt called the AirBear, um, which provides the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE connectivity. Um, it means that we have a, a method of uh, passing the serial data from the ECU, um, either over a Wi-Fi socket or a Bluetooth LE connection to mobile apps that support that. Um, and it means you can, you can connect your ECU directly over Wi-Fi using the normal Tuner Studio type interface that you're used to uh, without the need for a USB cable. Um, you can live tune, you can monitor it, you can download the SD card logs, um, all without needing to, to connect it via USB. Um, similarly, you can connect to any app that supports Bluetooth LE, um, and one of the, the bonuses of that is that it will also work on Apple iOS devices, um, which was not possible in the past with the Bluetooth Classic interface that we'd been using um, with the, the HCO5 and HCO6 Bluetooth modules. As well as those pass-through modes though, the AirBear unit 
also has a built-in Dash interface um, that is served via just a standard web page. Um, so if you've ever wanted to just quickly view um, the dashboard from your car or even have it a, a permanent installation um, that's wirelessly connected, um, this provides a really easy way to get that data from the device and have a nice um, visual connection to your ECU without having to be plugged into it all the time. There's no apps to install, um, there's no messing around with um, you know, connection files or different INI files and things like that. Um, simply open the, um, the URL to the ECU uh, and it will pop up in any modern browser. Um, you can even have up to three separate connections from three separate devices all connecting to the ECU and viewing the dash data at the same time. The AirBear module that powers all of this uh, is very much a work in progress in terms of its firmware at the moment um, and I'm, I'm growing to hope it's feature, grow its feature set relatively quickly. I'll do another video at some point as well um, just showing how if you've got even some basic web development skills um, you can actually make your own Dash interfaces and upload it to the module uh, and use that instead of the one that's, that's built in. Um, you don't need to play around with, with things like firmware interfaces, data protocols, what the serial interface is doing or anything like that. It's simply presented as a JSON data stream um, and can be used with any, uh, any standard web page that you want to put together for it. Uh, naturally, the AirBear module is fully open source and I really do hope it's something that, that might become a, a standard method for interfacing Speedwino e ECUs wirelessly, either via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, every DropBear V2 ECU comes with one of these modules built in and ready to go out of the box. Um, so it's all there, you don't have to connect anything else, you don't have to open the case. It's all there just ready to go, connect to it, change the Wi-Fi settings and it'll be, be good to go. So the DropBear V2 um, has the same pinout, same interfaces as um, the original V1 board, so if you have an existing one and wish to upgrade, you can simply plug this in and you'll be right to go off the bat. Um, they're available immediately on the speedwino.com store. I'll provide a link to that in the video description um, and will be shipping in about two to three weeks time um, from this point onwards. So I hope you're all excited as I am by the release of these and finally having them, the drop bear back in stock. Um, and if you've got any thoughts, comments or feedback about it, I'd love to hear them. All right. Thanks everyone.